first of all, I would like to thank you, Professor Dr. Hyung Jin Hwan Lee for accepting the invitations to be our honorable speaker today. Next, before we start our first agenda of today, I would like to introduce you how to participate in the Q&A sessions. Open the link in the confirmations email, join in the Slido and type your questions. Properly, we'll answer all the questions in the Q&A sessions. Finally, do not record the lecture. We will post the videos in APDSA official website. Thank you. So, yes. Yeah. So, can I start now? Oh, oh, before, before. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, hello everyone. First of all, thank you all for joining our third web APDSA webinar. I am Lia Seo. Uh, country representative of APDSA Korea and moderator of today's webinar. Uh, before I introduce you all to Professor Jung Hwan Lee, who is going to give us the third webinar, I would like to briefly talk about his bibliograph. Uh, Dr. Jung Lee graduated College of Dentistry, Nanggu University in 2011. He got his doctor's degree in dental biomaterials and bioengineering and applied life science Yonsei University in 2015. Uh, he was a research fellow in ITRN, which is Institute of Tissue Regeneration Engineering in Dango University till 2017. And now he's a professor in Dango University and keeps on his his research with its fellow researchers in ITREN, Department of Dental Biomaterials in Dental College, and Department of Nano Biomedical Science in BK21 plus MBN, a Global Research Center for Regenerative Medicine in Dangum University. Uh, today, he is going to give us a lecture, and the topic is Bioactive. A glass nanoparticle for dental tissue regeneration. If you have any questions, don't forget you can write it on the Slido and he will answer it after the lecture. Uh, thank you, Professor, for giving us a lecture tonight. And now please welcome Dr. John Lee. Yeah, thank you very much for your great presentation from President Rihanna and the moderator Cecilia So. So now I'm going to present my presentation. Okay. Sorry, so yes, today yeah, I'm gonna present my title Bioactive Glass Nanoparticles for Dental Tissue Regeneration. So like you, I'm a dentist, but I'm more focused on the research. So now I'm uh, start to make some new material for dental tissue regeneration. So yeah, before my presentation, I live in South Korea and in Chonan. So Chonan is located in the middle South Korea. And then we have many transportation systems to connect all of the location of South Korea. So we just call it as Fast Chonan as a nickname. And this is some my university, Dangu University. And then you can see the Seoul Busan Highway. And then next to the Seoul Busan Highway, we are located here. And then we have very beautiful campus. And then in the beautiful campus, we have this IT area called ITREN. I located here and then study. 24 hour per day and then every every day. And also dental school and hospital is lo right located to our ITREN building. So I'm co-positioned in the dental school and the ITREN. And then now I, I more focus on the research. So this is my yeah, homepage, ITREN.KR. And then I co-positioned in dental school and nanobiomedical science yeah, graduate school. So when you want to look at my CV more in detail, you can visit this ITREN KR homepage. And so we also learn our uh, co-positioned journal called JTE, Journal of Tissue Engineering. So maybe you have some interest about this one. So yeah, this is how I look. Yeah, normally I do my research by myself. Yeah, and then I sometimes I want to reduce my stress. So playing tennis, I reduce my stress. And then I also got some good activity and results from the tennis. So I highly recommend that if you have some, even though you are more focused on study 
and then I'm pretty sure that you have to do some other things to release your stress, including, including sports or YouTube or whatever you want. So when you Google my name, Jung Wan Lee, in Google Scholarship, maybe you can see my a lot of publication. So as you can see, I'm very a junior researcher in dental field, but I have certain quite main publication. And based on that, today I'm going to focus on this nanomaterial today. So and then during my research, my keyword is like I have to do my devotion over 300 hours per month as a research. And then my keyword is multidisciplinary and global and over dentistry. I do not want to limit my potential to dentistry. So I'll, I always try to look at more aim high. And then so after this kind of keyword and my achievement, I can get over 80 SI paper for six years. But and then top of 1% paper over 10. And then but, and now I'm still to do more focus on publishing my research in nature, science and cell papers. So maybe real soon will be released. So today, yeah, like I said before, I want to focus on nanomaterial today. So as a background for the, our dental regenerative field, so as you can see, this is some tooth. And then when you expose the dental pulp after removing your carriers, and then you can see the pulp are exposed. And then what can we done? So we have to do some pulp capping, which means that we have to use certain dental materials and cover this exposed pulp tissue. This is the only way of pulp regenerative clinical technique at the moment. But, and then for doing this kind of dental pulp capping, previously we have used calcium hydroxide and nowadays mineral trioxide aggregate called MTA. And then nowadays, uh, some company develops some light curable MTA based materials, but still, they have very limited regenerative potential. So sometimes it will induce failure of regeneration and then there's no way to do some root canal treatment. So other people suggest how can we use some purpose stem cell and then induce some odontoblast tissue and then we can implant them. But this is some dream way, not clinically available at the moment. So I want to find another way how to regener regenerate this purple tissue when they're exposed. So I want to focus on bioactive glass nanoparticle. What is it? This is some, uh, they have some apatite forming ability and their potential biological property due to release calcium and silicate ions, which means that we can regenerate dentin tissue when you apply this bioactive glass. And then this bioactive glass, have, when they have major pores, which means that 20 nanometer pore like this, and then they can load some biomolecules. And then when the, when the biomolecules are loaded in these small pores, 20 nanometer, we can control drug release efficiently, so, which means that we can successfully deliver and load and deliver our drug of interest to the target site. So my aim of this study is to make some kind of smart called major porous bioactive glass for purple regeneration. So originally, Many people done this about to make this major porous bioactive glass nanoparticle. But today, I want to share, I want to accelerate more this potential. So I want to dopt. Dopt means that adding this strontium or copper silver ions, silver element to this bioactive glass. And then they can start to release calcium silicate as well as our dopted, loaded ions. And then these, these dopted ions, they can have very, very special biofunctionality. And then if I additionally add drug using this major pores, I can finally load and release some drug as I want. And then when these nanoparticles are uptaken by the odontoblast or purple stem cell, they are di differentiated into the odontoblast, which means dentin tissue. So for that, I collect the human dental purple stem cell from the third molar extractive tooth, and then uh, co-culture this purple stem cell with my fabricated nanoparticle after drug loading. And then I want to check their 
pulp is a t potential as a pulp capping materials. So there are many methods to make this bioactive glass nanoparticle. And then when I say nanoparticle, which means that around more or less 10, 100 nanometer. So there are many ways, but I, I want to choose this surgeon method because using this surgeon method, I can make very uniform and a lot of nanoparticles. And then this is a basic recipe how I made this bioactive glass nanoparticle. Basically, this normal condition, Bezoporous bioactive glass nanoparticle, they have 85% of silicate and 15% of calcium. And I want to additionally add certain element which can show some additional bioactive activity. So instead of 5% calcium, I add strontium, copper, or silver as a 5%. And then this is the methodology how I make this nanoparticle. Basically, they start to from the base solution, pH 12.5, and then after a certain time, their pH decreases, and then the solution can be made nanoparticle as a gel, and then when it dries it, and then we can, we can fabricate a bunch of nanoparticle, which is size more or less 100 nanometer. And then after getting this nanoparticle, there are several ways to investigate the biofunctionality, so which is called direct treatment, which means that I directly co-culture um, co with cell and nanoparticle together. Second one is though, when I make this kind of disk specimen as a cement, and then I seeded our purpose stem cell on this disk. This is called attachment assay. And then, like we make the coffee from the coffee powder, so I extract some certain condition media from this specimen or nanoparticle, and then I use this extract to culture this purpose stem cell. This is called indirect treatment. So over three kind of different conditions, I evaluate my nanoparticles by functionality. So when you want, after making this nanoparticle, I want to look at the size as I design. So this was normal bioactive glass nanoparticle. They have around 15 nanometer, which is revealed by TEM, some kind of microscope. And then when I add strontium element, also they have similar nanoparticle size around 15 nanometer. And then I check the strontium element by XPS, which is some another tool to check the, um, your element of interest in your nanoparticle. And then I want I want to check as I, as I design our silicone and calcium and strontium can be released from the, our nanoparticle. Just the normal ambient without strontium, they only release silicon and calcium ions. But as I design, strontium dumped ambient, they can load, they can show some strontium ions. So this is totally what I expected. So I say I can say that I successfully made this nanoparticle as I design. And then as a nanoparticle characteristic, there is many way, many parameters to check it, their size, their area, and average pore size, total pore volume, and zeta potential. This is a charge of your nanoparticle. All of them are done by the BT. This is another golden standard to check your nanoparticle characteristic, and which show very similar between MBN and strontium dotted MBN. And then I check their bioactivity acellular way, which means that without any cell, I just incubate this nanoparticle with simulated body fluid, which is the same as our body fluid. So from this body fluid, we can observe some hydrosapatite can be precipitate in this strontium MBN and MBN, which means that, which is called the bioactive property. So when we want to say bioactive property, which means that when you emerge your bioactive dental material, they should precipitate this kind of hydrosapatite on your surface. And then now I can start to, I uh, started to do some cell work. So over the certain concentration of nanoparticle, I treat this nanoparticle to the human dental stem cell. And then over time, one to three day, it will show more or less similar cell viability, which means that they don't have any cytotoxicity. But in case of turn to MBN, as three day, 
this 320 microgram per ml start to show that toxicity then control 0 microgram per ml so I choose up to 160 microgram per ml for next study and then when I conjugate the FITC to visual visual visualize our nanoparticle I check when the nanoparticle was obtained by the cell they literally eat this nanoparticle so you can see this red actin cytoskeleton almost cytoskeleton this uh, green nanoparticle are inside of the actin which means that the nanoparticle can be obtained by the cell by themselves regardless of MBN or strontium adopted MBN and then I want to check how this nanoparticle can be obtained underlying mechanism so I found that this 4 degree and sodium acetate, I found that the cell, when they can use ATP to uptake the cell, they can uptake. But without ATP, after this treating 4 degree and the SA chemical treatment, there is no uptake, which means that the cell needs ATP to uptake this nanoparticle. And then over time, uh, over the concentration, I checked so how much of nanoparticle can be obtained by the cell. So when I treat 160 microgram per ml, they obtake around 100% like this. And then same as the MBN, strontium MBN also from the ATP dependent manner, they are obtained by the cell. And then this is not the only way to check their nanoparticle uptake. So I want to look at in my eyes. So I saw by BioTM to check nanoparticle obtained by the cell. So when you look at the asterisk, you can see some black dot, which is nanoparticle. They are ongoing obtained by the cell. And then I want to check the intracellular and extracellular ions from the nanoparticle. So as you expect, all kinds of three ions are highly, highly released, highly obtained in intracellular way or extracellular way, which means the out of the cell and inside of the cell. Those are part, those are ions are stacked in the cell or out of cell. And then, but strontium only are observed in strontium MBN. And then, now I can check the differentiation potential to odontoplast from the human donor fibroblast, human donor, human dental purpose stem cell. And over time, 3, 7, 14, and 21 days, I can ob observe some increase of this those odontoplast differentiation gene expression including collagen 1A, DMP1, DSPP, and OCN. And then compared to MBN, when you can see strontium MBN, a little bit increase compared to MBN. And then when you compare strontium MBN 80 and 160, you can also detect it. 160 is better than 80. So 7, 14, and 21 days, Generally, their gene expression increase, and then when they increase, strength to MB 160 is better than others, which means that our strength to MBN can have more potential to differentiate of, of human metabolic stem cell to odontoplast compared to only MBN. So we can highlight the strength to have some some excellent efficacy to accelerate odontoplast differentiation. And then I want to check, for previously I checked the gene expression, but gene should be translated into the protein and the ECM. So this is some outcome of the protein, ALP, which means that phosphate. And then this below images is the calcium labeled by ALS staining. So when you say dentin, the composition of dentin includes maybe 90% of the hydrogen apatite. Hydrogen apatite composed of phosphate and calcium and then hydroxide. So ALP is measured by the phosphate and then ARS the staining is can measure the calcium deposition on the cell. So from the both I'll say I can say that this strontium MBN is better to show phosphate or and calcium deposition on the cell compared to just without strontium. So even this without strontium nanoparticle nanoparticle, they have better effect than uh, just normal differentiation media. So we can say that 
strontium have some synergetic effect to induce autotoplast differentiation from the human dendrocalcus the stem cell. And then, next step, I feel like this strontium ion is not enough to show high potential to regenerate dental pulp. So, I only decided to use some drug. So, any drug on chemical, possibly. So, as you know, the BMP is very one of the powerful signals to regenerate dentin. So, among this uh, BMP pathway, recently the phenomenon is single chemical which can activate BMP pathway. That I decided to use this phenomenon because a BMP have many side effects. They have they can control other pathway, but only phenomenon they can only focus on the, this BMP subway single pathway, and then they can limitedly induce some uh, BMP signaling to regenerate that type of stem cell. So it's a little bit complicated, but over the increase of the concentration of the phenomenon, I can load certain amount, like ab absolutely 30% maximumly. And after phenomenon loaded in strong MBN, I check phenomenon is located, yes or not. When you see this peak, this is phenomenal peak, so I can say phenomenal is loaded in, an, in our nanoparticle. And then, how they release the phenomenon? I check they are released quite fast in over two days and start to release slowly after that. So I check this release pattern fast initially, slow later. This is some similar pattern. And then, after loading this phenomenal in my strontium bioglass, I want to compare their bioactivity. So this is the phenomenon only, which are loaded in nanoparticle. And then in this nanoparticle, in the strontium plus phenomenon. As you can see, this DMP1, this PP gene expression is highly increased compared to M strontium MBN and phenomenon in strontium plus phenomenon. And then to reveal the underlying mechanism, I checked the protein level by Western blood. So I saw the strontium plus phenomenal group have more TIB3 increased protein, SMRP1 decrease, and then SMAD increase. And then this is very similar to the amount of the BMP. This is positive control. So without BMP, I can accelerate this uh, odont uh, human bioblast odontoblast differentiation in strontium adopted bioglass with phenomenal. And then this ENF is a uh, semi quantification of this Western blood band. And then, as a dentist, I can do some kind of in vivo work. So I use the rat and then drill the, to expose the pulp tissue. And then as a blank, which means I just use resin to cover this pulp. And then this phenomenal, phenomenal was applied. And then this is a biogla bioglass applied and a strontium doped bioglass applied. The strontium plus phenomenal applied. When you look at this red color, which is some um, regenerative dentin, and then you can see by x ray, the dentin, some kind of heart tissue is more regenerated in here. And then this was, this red color was quantified by as a new heart tissue volume and more surface area and the more surface density in strontium doped by glass with phenomenal. And then when I look at the histology, I can see li literally this uh, osteodentin formation in this pulp chamber. As you, can, as you know, the osteodentin is a reparative dentin in the pulp chamber. So I saw abundant osteodentin in pulp chamber, especially in strong to ambient phenomenal group. So this was already quantified in this DND. And you can see this quantification result also show more increase of thickness of tertiary dentin layer and the pulp tissue area in the whole total pulp chamber area. As a summary, I can say that when I treat this phenomenon loaded bioactive glass after doping with strontium, so after this nanoparticle are be uptaken by the st stem cell, they start to release phenomenal strontium and calcium and silicate ion. Especially strontium and phenomenal, they can activate TRB3 and then the TRB3 activation decreases morphone and this pathway can increase SMAD and 
This smart protein can accelerate the SPP and TMP1 gene expression, which is directly correlated to differentiation of the dendritic stem cell to odontoblast. So I can suggest drug ion code delivery system or by using biotype glass for dental purpose stem cell regeneration, which is published in Acta Biomaterial. And then next, I feel like, as you know, when the pulp was exposed in clinical way, what was there? They have many bacteria. So to kill the bacteria, maybe I need another ions. So in this time, I adopted silver in biotype glass. So silver biotype glass have also very similar diameter, around 100 nanometer. And then in this time, I loaded tetracycline, which is used antibiotics in dental clinician. And then I checked the iron leach, silicate, calcium, and silver. And as you can, as you can expect, silver vision only release silver ions. And other ions, silicate and calcium, those are released from BGN and silver BGN, but BGN has more released calcium and silicon ion. And then these two nanoparticles, they have similar size, area, and average pore size, and zeta potential. And then, same as before, I checked their gene suppression level, DMP1, DSPP, and as you can see, but the silver BGN have a little bit similar or less increase of, of gene expression for odontoplast differentiation compared to normal BGN because this is some, I feel like, a drawback of the silver. So when you look at the 160 AG BGN and BGN, this BGN is a little bit higher than AG BGN. Also this PP, also we can see like that. And then this ARP, also marker of phosphate formation, is also highly increased BGN, but AG BGN a little bit Compromise, but we can say that is even though AGBG a little bit compromised compared to BGN, but without a nanoparticle, just only media group, we can say that this AGBG have some good event compared to normal odontoblast medium condition. And then when you look at the calcium deposition, so a BGN has more calcium deposition than AGBG, but still AGBG has more cash deposition compared to odontoblast differentiation media. And then, as I said before, I used tetracycline for as uh, antibiotics to decrease some bacteria viability. And then after loading tetracycline, I expect the tetracycline loading, they don't have inhibition effect to induce odontoblast differentiation. So luckily, after loading tetracycline, this AGBG and TCA AGBG have similar DMP1 and this PP gene expression, which means that they have similar potential to be induced in odontoblast from the human dental stem cell. And also, ALP and calcium deposition has similar tendency with or with tetracycline loading. And now, as you expect, it's time to check some antibacterial effect. So, as you know, so S mutants is a major bacteria for inducing dental caries and effectless is a major bacteria in the pulp, defect, infected pulp. So I chose these two key bacteria strain and then check their bacteria viability from the five groups. So bacteria only high availability over time and BGN, there's no, I know things to inhibit the bacteria viability. So black and red one is similar. AGBGen in case of S mutants, little bit, little bit less viability, but in the end similar. But in case of effectless, when you look at this, they have more or less bacteria viability, which means that they have bacteria static or bacteria side effect. We didn't sure at the moment. And then after loading tetracycline, S mutants and effectless, those have very lower bacteria viability. And then when you use tetracycline as a passive control, they show like this. But this tetracycline amount is maybe 10 times more than these things. So we can say that, oh, this tetracycline loaded AGBG have some antibacterial effect in S mutants and epicalis. 
And then I want to know how they have this antibacterial effect. So by bio, bio TM, I when I culture this bacteria with my nanoparticle, I want to look at how they interact each other. So firstly, I expect that this nanoparticle can penetrate the bacterial membrane. But here, I cannot see any nanoparticle inside the bacteria. So only this nanoparticle can attach the bacterial membrane in with or without tetracycline. And then I want to quantify how much a bacteria can interact with this nanoparticle. So approximately 30% are interacted each other between bacteria and nanoparticle. And then we can easily think, think that so that when you have drug to deliver to bacteria, and when they are close to each other, maybe they have more potential to deliver the drug from nanoparticle to the bacteria. So as I assume like that, I check their tetracycline uptake efficiency. So tetracycline, they have green fluorescence, autofluorescence by themselves. So when I directly treat tetracycline loaded AGBGN in bacteria, effectless, this red color is highly expressed from the bacteria. And then I want to say this tetracycline is from the nanoparticle, so I dye nanoparticle as a red color, they are co-stain like this. And then when you look at this bacteria, the morphology like this. So we can say that this bacteria can have more tetracycline in case of TCAG BGN compared to extract. So actually this TCAG BGN was co-culture with bacteria for 30 minutes. So as a control group, I independently incubate the tissue AGBGN in bacteria culture media with the bacteria. And then I collect the extract and then I use the extract to co-culture with the bacteria for 30 minutes. And then I found that compared to this only lily tetracycline from the extract, this direct interact with particle and bacteria, they have more high tetracycline delivery. So which was quantified by the facts, around 80% of bacteria they can obtain tetracycline. But when you use extract, which means that without direct interplay between bacteria and nanoparticle, they have 60%. So we can expect more 30 or 40% increase of tetracycline uptake by the nanoparticle direct interaction with bacteria. And then I want to check the activity from the antibiotic drug and the silver. So the role of the anti uh, tetracycline is to inhibit protein synthesis. So when you look at the TCAG BGN, you can see only this one, they have some significantly lower protein synthesis. But when you compare it to tetracycline AGBGN extraction, they are a little bit higher. So we can say that our direct Married from the direct interplay between nanoparticle and bacteria, they have more inhibit protein synthesis. And then the silver effect to rupture the bacterial membrane. So as you can see, this ruptured bacteria, they highly shown in bacterial lysis, pisim control. And when you only look at the AGB gen, they show like this. But compared to the extraction, or maybe only direct way have more bacteria membrane rupture. And then when the bacteria rupture the membrane, they start to release LDH, which is a marker of the rupture of the cell membrane. And then we can, we can assume like that when this AGBGN, they interact with the bacteria membrane, and then they more successfully, efficiently deliver tetracycline, which was loaded in nanoparticle, as well as silver. And then this rupture of membrane from the silver and photosynthesis inhibition from tetracycline was co omnigulate the antibacterial effect. And then, as you expect, I can do some in vivo work. So after drilling to expose the dental proper tissue from the red molar, I reinforcedly infected this property is using effectless bacteria. And then I cover this exposed pulp with a nanoparticle and then 
After six weeks later, I confirmed the regenerative potential. So as you can, as you, you saw before, the red color is regenerative dentin from the inside of the pulp chamber. So the TCB AGB gen has more red color, which means that they have more regenerative dentin. And then when you look at the apical the root side, the white one, which means that uh, the alveolar bone surrounding your apical root area, they are all reserved, reserved it, which means that they are all degraded. But in case of TCAGB gen, they are all sustained as a gray color. And then in this time, I compared MTA as a commercially available product control. Also, MTA was revealed some has antibacterial effect, and then they also used for covering the pulp tissue. So I use it as a control group. So I confirmed that compared to MTA even, this TCA AGB gen has better effect, the MTA. And when you look at the histology, you can see the, this uh, forcation area highly resolved it in control and MTA. But when you look at the tetracycline, AGB gen, and TCA AGB gen, there is not much of forcation open area. And then when you look at some osteodentin, this is some tertiary dentin in tentapurp tissue. You can see many dentin tissue in TCA GB gen. So uh, from now on, I directly use nanoparticle and then make it as a paste to apply in exposed dental pulp tissue. But I feel like oh, this is not enough as a dental material because they are not set. Set means they're not cemented. So I want to make some kind of cement type. Cement type means that they, are, they can make certain shape after one or two hours later. So for making this kind of B-gen cement, I control their calcium composition and then their, their morphology. So I can make small pore like this and the large pore like this and then different calcium composition from 0 to 25%. And then I check their some bioactivity using this XRD, which shows some armor pores, which means that glass, typical type of the biological glass, in small and large pore and with or with calcium. And then this is some their beige morphology revealed by TM. This large pore have very large pore, you can see, and this small pore, very little, little dot there. And then this, this is their typical characteristic as a particle, pore size, area, volume, data potential. They have a little bit different between small and large pore. When you look at the pore size, four or six in large, two or three as small. But other area and pore volume, pore volume even larger in large compared to sm small pore. And then I choose this 15% as a part, as the as a future study because I assume that more surface area, more pore size, and more pore volume, they have more good chance to have some cementation. And then I can successfully make BGM powder as a large pore, and after mixing a liquid, and then I can successfully sow some hardening as a cement. When I look at their morphology by SCM microscope, you can see like this. And when you look at more nanoparticles, you can see like this. And then I want to determine the powder liquid ratio from 0.3 to 0.5. And then maybe this 0.4 looks optimal, which has a lower setting time. And then when you mix, mix them liquid and powder, I can get more viscosity to apply in dental pulp. And then as a liquid, there are several candidates. And then I choose this NH2 PO4 2.5%, which has low seed setting time. But not low seed, but similar setting time with compared to 5%, but when I use 5%, they are too hard. They are easily break down, so I use 2.5%. And then when I use this 0.4% powder liquid ratio and then this liquid and then when I check their setting time I only observe good setting time homogeneously at 15% as I expect and then I check their uh, bioactivity and then 
So this is the peak of HA, which means that this region cement after setting, they have bioactivity. So when I look at their surface, they show this kind of hydrogen apartheid, more typical morphology. And then when you look at this CPC, this is the commercially available bone cement. When you look at this, this one also has show hydrogen apartheid crystal, but this crystal is more larger than this nano cement. So we can say that uh, when you look at some cell, the cell size is around 10 to 20 micrometer. So when cell want to touch their microenvironment, their size is less than micrometer, like more like 100 nanometer or few nanometer. So you can see that compared to this micro side crystal, this nano side hydrochapata crystal is better for the stem cell differentiation or stem cell some touching. So uh, this is some after making this kind of cement, I also check their major porosity, uh, which is another merit of nanoparticle. So I can, from this nanopore, I can successfully load some protein in nano cement. But CPC, they don't have this kind of small pore, so they li little load the protein. So I check their calcium silic silicate ion release from the cement. And then when I use their cement extract as the original and then ciliar di dilution, I check their good event in red MSC increase of, of cell viability. And then when I check their uh, bone differentiation, actually this time I use the red MSC and then I check the bone formation. And then I check collagen 1 ALP OCN was increased in this diluted cement extract compared to only media control group. And then this, I can expect some increased angiogenesis from the silicate ion. So simi uh, similarly, at the same time, we check the silicate ion when they are released from a certain biomaterial, they can activate angiogenesis, some blood vessel formation. So I check their HUVAC, which is, a, which is some a basic cell line for checking endogenesis. Without any cell viability, I can check this more tubular formation compared to control, which means that this tubular is a marker of the blood vessel. And then in camel cell using the egg, I can see more dramatic this blood vessel compared to control and original CPC cement. And then now I make this kind of cement like a triangular and implant in red calvaria. Calvaria means some head a bone. And then I saw similar bone volume formation in CPC nano cement, but the only different thing is that nano cement can induce some bone formation from the material. But when you see the CPC, original commercially available bone cement, the bone is always regenerated from the original day native bone. So when you can say that this is called also inductive, when the material can start to induce the bone or dentine formation from the side of the material. But when certain material, they show some regenerative potential of bone from the native bone, which is called osteoconductive. So we also check the other red calvaria, same as before, also inductive, also conductive. You can look at the asterisk. And then this is some summary of nano cement and conventional CPC. So we can say that nano cement they have very good event to regenerate bone compared to old commercially available material. But the only drawback is they have very less uh, mechanical property. This is something we have to overcome later. And as a summary conclusion, I can make three different materials, strontium dopted one and silver dopted one and the calcium silicate ion released nano cement. Those are good candidate or perfect material I can suggest. And then briefly, I want to share another topic, maybe five minutes, topic about some how we utilize nanoparticle for other dental material. So I first, when you look at the denture, there are many bacteria or candida albicans there. So I want to decrease biofilm. So any inhibition strategy? So I use silver incorporated some nanoparticle. And then when I check silver incorporated in here, and then I check the silver amount, like 30% I incorporated in our nanoparticle, 
you check their nanoparticle property, and then denture is very important to maintain their mechanical property from the fracture strength and because hardness, I can choose maybe 5% is okay as maximum to incorporate our nanoparticle in denture. And then I check the candida alpicans, which is a major player to induce some candida albicans disease in from the denture. So when you look at this little, little thing, is the is the candida albicans. When you look at this age MSM five percent, very less than MSM five percent, and compared to zero percent. So we can say that this Streptococcus oralis and the candida albicans is highly non-attached in age MSN compared to MSN and then 0% of nanoparticle. And then I want to know what is the mechanism. So the surface roughness is very higher in this without silver in 5% increase, but mostly they are similar with or without nanoparticle incorporation. The different thing is the surface energy from the hydrophilicity. So with or with silver, when you, when you incorporate on a particle, they will show more surface energy, which is more hydrophilicity. So we can expect that this hydrophilicity can be a one mechanism to reduce biofilm or bacterial attachment formation. And then, absolutely, little silver ion from the denture, they can show some inhibition effect. We can expect like that. And then as a long term assay, over 28 days, I see continuously check their uh, arbicans attachment. So they are a little bit increased over time, but still they are decreased compared to without nanoparticle. And then I can successfully recharge the silver into denture over this 80%. And then I check one more time after recharging. And then so we can expect that without this oral keratocyte viability. A yeah, little bit decreased in silver, but almost similar way. So I can say that this denture, when they, inc when they incorporate this nanoparticle of silver, they can show can the arbicans attachment decrease, and then we can recharge it for maintaining this detachment efficacy. And then as a secondly, I, as you know, this glass dynamor originally used as a base or dentin restorative material. So, but they have very limited proper degenerative potential. So I want to increase more using bioactive glass. So after incorporating the bioglass, I can check that I check bioglass is successfully loaded in this uh, glass inomer. And setting time a little bit increased, but it's not much difference. And then weight change is almost similar. And then I check their strengths Strength is also over the 28 days incubation in your body fluid. So more similar be between BGM5 and control, or a little bit increase in here. And then I check some their bioactivity. So when you can see when, when this glass cell number incorporate BGM 5%, they will start to show this hydrogen part formation, which is good sign for dentin perp generation. And then I check the variability is similar, but this purple generation, purple generation ability highly increased in BGM 5% included, which is quantified in uh, ARS staining. And as a last, uh, you know, the, when you want to make some bond between dentin and composite lesion, we need this dentin bonding agent. But sometimes from the enzyme degradation, they induce failure of dentin bonding and that they cause secondary carriers and need another strategy to overcome this enzyme degradation of this dentin bonding. So here, to decrease enzyme enzymatic potential in, from the dental fluid, I incorporate this Cooper BGM, Cooper incorporated bioglass in dentin bonding agent to induce therapeutic adhesive system. So I checked their Cooper BGM bioactivity in here, same as before, checks their cell viability and no, no change of viability in here. And then I check their good event for inducing some dentin proper generation from the odontoplast differentiation as a red color compared to this control group. And then this is the more, most important thing. So from the total MMP, MMP is some enzyme from the dentinal fluid to 
degrade your adhesive resin. So the MMP is highly decreased in CUBGN. Deactivation is increased, which means that MMP is decreased. And then from this decrease of MMP deactivation, so micro tensile strength is maintained yeah, from the CUBGN. So when you look at the failure type, this is CUBGN more good than on without nanoparticle. And then when you look at the CUBGN, dental adhesive and BGN only, you can see some when you see some gap between dental resin and uh, dentin, you can see some some regenerated some up precipitate dentin formation in CBGN. But in BGN without copper, they show less efficacy. So this is some conclusion of my whole scenario. So yeah, I want to thank all of the person in my iTrain group and Dangguk Dental School. So this is some their picture yeah, like this. So we only 50 or 50 and 40 or 50 person as a whole team. And then we, and then we sometimes we go for releasing our stress. So when you look at the iTrain homepage, so, and then when you want to look at my email, so in our iTrain group, we have four international dentists at the moment. And then they are all PhD candidates from the Mongolia, Vietnam, and India. So when you look at this site homepage, you can see some we are recruiting graduate school students. So all of the dentists or other field is okay for us. So only condition for joining this art train as a PhD student, you can have some English score and over IBT 80 or IH 5.5, and then you can have some interview with me, and then you can get some permission to enter. And then we can suggest all of the scholarship, including living expense and tuition fee. Yeah. So if you have a question, you can email and then you, we can look at this homepage. So thank you for your great attention and then give me any comment and question. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor, for, for a lecture. And, uh, because all of us are in clinical ear, it is hard to learn about dental materials, but I hope everyone has learned a lot about bioactive stress nanoparticles. And now we will have a question and answer session. Uh, Rina will show us the questions and I will read it out and Professor will answer it. Uh, in, uh, yes, and since questions are not that much, Professor, you can take your time and answer the questions. Yeah, so for number one, yeah, I know it's very, topic is very hard, so sorry for that. So, but anyhow, I want to make some kind of new dental material for the dentist. That's what I hope to say. So for that, we have many other strategies. So you guys can think about how you make it better dental material for the, clean, for the patient. And number two, silver TC combination Containing differentiation of the plus. Yeah, actually, yeah, silver and tetracycline, yeah, baby, they are dotted or loaded for inducing some antibacterial effect. But at the same time, we do not want to, this loading one can inhibit some differentiation ability to the odontoblast. So they, it showed that they have little less differentiation of the blast compared to normal without silver tetracycline, but they still have more differentiation ability than control group. So we can see that this can be good. And how did you get interested in tissue generation among so many dental material topics? Actually, tissue generation is, um, how can I say, very fancy at the moment. So if you want to be a scientist as a clinician, I suggest that tissue engineering, tissue generation is the one you have to choose. Yeah, without that, maybe you cannot get. I maybe most of the research or research people, as a clinician, they want to do this tissue and tissue generation and engineering. Yeah, so according to the whole some interest from the many good scientists, I also follow this concept. So I have a simple question, how about MTA for apex fixation? Yeah, MTA already, as I, as I know, MTA already used as a apex fixation. 
So maybe as MTA, may our biochlorid bio particle also they can be used as a pacification so far. So what condition is effectless most often found histologically? Yeah, effectless also we are using that bacteria strain to mimic some kind of infected vampire, in, infected dental perp, an infected dental perp. So we saw that so many some macrophage or some giant cell are appear in histology, and then this histology also get they can show some degradation of the alveolar bone near the our interest of the tooth. So that's what we saw before. Why do you choose tetracycline? Yeah, actually it's a very good important good question. So originally tetracycline has auto green fluorescence. So that's why we choose it. Actually TC never been used for treating uh, infected dental perp because they have many some drawback spot because of the tetracycline has some auto green fluorescence and then to track so drug delivery to the bacteria, we use that. How significant between the triple antibiotic paste and just one antibiotic treatment? Yeah, I saw some paper. So maybe triple, uh, sometimes they can be better than single, but depending depends on which kind of antibiotic you use. For example, uh, depending on antibiotic, they have a different target. One is inhibition of protein synthesis, the other one is inhibition of or induces some some memory rupture, the other one is some inhibition or proliferation. So when you mix this kind of different mechanism, that can be synergistic good. But when these three things have some similar mechanism, I don't think so. Bioglass and a particle have a factor polypromic cytokine including promoterism. Yeah. Actually, yeah proliferative cytokines uh, we hopefully expect that this point cytokine will be decreased from the bagged glass. And then maybe they can faster regeneration of purple exposure. Because this bioglass has some little bit high pH around 9 or 10 when we applied it. And then this high pH can also deactivate the bacteria. So when the bacteria de deactivated, maybe pro-inflammatory cytokine will be decreased. That's what I expected. Golden standard and material prop tissue like orthodontics. The golden standard, as I said before, calcium hydroxide, and then with mineral trioxide trioxide aggregate MTA is the golden standard at the moment. Yeah, and then but actually this is not enough, and then it's not, it's very hard to say sometimes to induce pulp tissue generation. So maybe we have to find another strategy to regenerate the pulp tissue, like some pulp stem cell living scaffold or this kind of very fancy nanoparticle induce more regenerative potential to the pulp. At the moment, this current dental material is not enough to induce enough pulp tissue generation. Kytosan, yeah, Kytosan, maybe over 30 years they use it. So we can, we can make Kytosan nanoparticle but when you make calcium nanoparticle, they only dissolve in acid acid, which is very near pH 5. So which means the pH 5 is a very, little bit toxic sometimes. And then this chitosan uh, has very high viscosity, so it's not easy to apply easily. But when you can op optimize something, maybe you can make some good result. Uh, use tetracycline, other, yeah, actually, Without TC, we can use another antibiotics to load in nanoparticle. So, like I said before, TC was used as a model antibiotics because of their green fluorescence. Yeah, can you please explain? More? Okay, any rejection while combining those materials? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's a good question. So, how we optimize the metal in this nanoparticle? So, I this time I adopted 5% only, but when you incorporate 10 or 15, maybe they have some adverse effect from the a lot of metal ions. So I optimize the composition as a 5% to optimize it. So as I said, uh, as the same as the metal, the drug and other bioglass and particle, when their amount is higher than what we optimize, absolutely it will show 
adverse effect. So depending on your condition, we have to optimize. Yeah. How soon do you think that this material market? Yeah, maybe five or 10 years later. Now I'm doing some kind of clinical research for publishing in the market. So when I successfully publish in the market, I will share the ideas. How the mechanism this material affect the mechanical property of denture and decrease my volume? Yeah, actually, yeah, this nanoparticle has a little porosity. So like you said, this porosity can induce some kind of decrease of mechanical property. But so I optimized uh, maybe 5% up to 5%. This nanoparticle cannot decrease the mechanical property. So I used that amount. And then um, this biofilm decrease is from the hydrophilicity. So as a denture, resin by hydrophobicity which means that when you put some water, they make some round shape. But when I added nanoparticle indenture, when, you, when I add water, the water is go like this, very spread out, which means the more hydrophilicity. So normally people said that when certain material have hydrophilicity, they have some anti-biofilm formation. Yeah. And then second one is that if you load silver, silver is the best element to decrease some bacteria. Yeah, every nanoparticle have antibacterial effect. Actually, yeah, actually non nanoparticle. So silver, copper, cobalt. Actually, most of the metal, like you said, metal have some kind of antibacterial effect. Yeah, mangan, metal, strontium. Yeah, most of the metal, precious metal, they have it. So periodontal. Yeah, of course. Periodontal regeneration also can be applied using this nanoparticle. But we have to formulate more how we adjust this nanoparticle in periodontal tissue because periodontal tissue is more movable and the more flow away from the saliva. So we have to find a proper way how to deposit our nanoparticle surrounding the periodontal tissue. Yeah, this yeah, maybe the same question. This is not uh, quite often used in dental perp yeah at the moment because they have some uh, inhibitor they have some resistant effect so I just use TC as a model drug uh, yeah I have some interest in research in perp regenerative procedure because uh, when we when we think about the next loom what can be the next generation dental material after dental implant Maybe that one can be the purple regenerative material. So that's why most of the scientists or dentists, they want to focus on the purple regenerative material. Thank you so much. I also respect you. Uh, interest is already used in vivo. Actually, um, yeah, that's right. That's correct. We need some very long-term data for checking NMP degradation from the in vivo study. So yeah, now we are doing some in vivo using the rat. Yeah, so maybe the data is more or less similar with the in vitro, which means that they have some certain good event. Yeah, so now we are studying how this MMP is degraded and then how this MMP degradation from the copper ion they can link to the dentin or dentin adhesive resin interplay. Okay, after semi. Can you please explain more about the uh, MDPH degree requirement? Yeah, actually, yeah, we highly recommend you guys can integrate course master and PhD degree. So almost the minimum is 3.5 years, and then we around five, maximum five or six years, you can graduate as a PhD course, which means that except a master degree, you can directly get a PhD. Maybe if you go USA, maybe they offer like same manner, integrate course master and PhD. So, and then you can be given the full scholarship and living expense. And the only way you can uh, suggest us is that you can be qualified from the English score. And then after Eng passion English score, you can have the interview with me and then we can make some yeah, schedule when you join the ITREN as a PhD course. Yeah, bacter bacterial static and bacterial cider. Static utility, they, they just not kill the bacteria, but they just sustain the, they do not, they just inhibit the bacteria growth. Bacteria cider, they kill the bacteria, which means that they literally 
decrease the bacteria number. So both of them, they are used quite, is now commonly available in dentists. So, so nowadays I heard that bacteria static and bacteria cider, they are combined together to show some synergy effect. Okay. Ending. <coughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I know it's very hard to understand. And then for when I present this one from the other researcher, also they think that it's a little bit hard to for them. But I want to say that you guys can have some dream over the this current dental material. You feel like also this current material is not always optimized. There has many room to upgrade. So you have to think about how you upgrade it, how you make it better. So as a dentist, maybe you can, when you make some one good material, you can be a star in the worldwide. And also you can get a lot of money, and then you can be a very good scientist as well. And then there are many good dentist-based scientists in the worldwide. So I highly recommend that even though now you are in the undergrad or graduate school in dental school, but I hope your aim is more than dental. So I want to highlight that over the dental, when you look at the more upper side, and then you can enlarge your view more than this time. And then you can be a more good person for the yeah, for your patient or your friend. So how about the person? Yes, yeah, for checking the materials by activity for as a dental tissue generation, we always we have to uh, co-culture or treat to the dental purpose stem cell. This is the only or not yeah, I hardly say that this is the only stem cell we can check to investigate the tissue generative potential from the dental materials. Okay. Uh, our, uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Professor, for giving us a great lecture tonight. And uh, thank you all for joining our third webinar. And that's it for our uh, third APDSC webinar. And yeah, thank you again. Once again, thank you, Professor Lee, for spending your valuable weekend sharing with us. We really appreciate your effort doing this for us. Last but not least, I appreciate everyone in the live stream for being here with us today. I wish you all the best and enjoy your lovely weekend. Goodbye, and I hope to see you all again next week on Saturday. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay, Professor. goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.